Hey, welcome to Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades. I'm Gary Harper, and this is the Honorable John Heichel. Hey, Gary. It's John, right? Yeah, okay, it's John. It is. And Jack Kimball is with us to talk about Antifa. You know, John, my mother named me John, too. I heard. Yeah, she named me after a toilet. That's why I'm Jack. Uh-huh. Last time I throw that out there. I don't know Jack. I don't know Jack. Hopper. Just don't say that on the airplane. <laughs> Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Yeah, that is a good point. Hi, Jack. Hey, so anyway, I, I wanted to get together and talk about this, and that because um, we had the the uh, the big riot in Char Charlottesville, right? Yep. And it was almost instant in instantaneous because the mayor and the governor, within hours, I think of the, all, all the violence, turned around and blamed Trump. Okay, mm -hmm. and I was on Facebook, and my first thought was, well, if the mayor wasn't prepared for what was obviously going to happen, then he is most most to blame, second by the governor, because he should have been have been double checking to make sure there were uh, resources on hand to make sure those groups never even got close to each other. But they didn't. They allowed it to happen in my view well not only did they allow it to happen they actually facilitated right. it right and they the policemen were told to stand down and then when they went and broke the rally up uh the white supremacists and by the way let's knock off this term white nationalists it's a setup folks i mean they're trying to group everyone together people like you and i uh, as white nationalists being so synonymous with supremacists but what happened was the police actually took when they broke that up, the rally up, they took those people and sent them through the gauntlet. Now you had to know what was going to happen when they did that. Uh, this this had nothing to do, as we all know, with Donald Trump, and had everything to do with the big state and what they're trying to do to Donald Trump. And that's what happened here. And this isn't going to stop, as you can see, it's growing. Right. From all from all angles. Yep. I mean, from friends, from foe, from. Well, not friends, but obviously, but 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 inner circle kind of. This is happening from everywhere, attacking President Trump. Well, it's, yes, but it was before that. So I, I after after the thing, I said um, I started looking into Antifa itself because I, I don't want this program to be misinterpreted as the people on this program are in support of the KKK or the the Nazis. I mean, let's, absolutely not. Let's face We're it. The, the KKK, when it was in the, I think it was in the 40s, had like four million members. All right, all Democrats or most Democrats. Now there's like eight thousand, and a population of 350 million people. Eight thousand people is not a threat to anybody. They're just loud noises that happen. It's negligible. It's, it's negligible. Uh, the Nazi Party. I don't think it's even eight thousand. There's nobody that really believes that's a great idea. Um, the prob the problem is as Antifa is taking hold, especially amongst people who are young and impressionable and don't know history, and those are the real threat. If you go back to uh, Berkeley before President. Uh, Trump was elected. They were going after Trump supporters and with uh, bike chains and everything else. And, and, and if you look at what they believe in, they're anti-capitalist, they're anti-Republican, you know, they're um, obviously anti-free speech because they're trying to shut it down. But if you go further back, it was formed in 1932. Antifa was formed in Germany in response to the fact that the communism and fash and the uh, um, what was was Hitler was the National Socialist Party, right? Okay, so you had the National Socialists, which is com government control, versus the communists, which were total government control, fighting it out, and the communists lost out um, and were banned from Germany. And that's when Antifa formed out of that group, out of the communist group. And they claim to be fighting fascism, but what they're really supporting is they're fighting anybody that disagrees with them, and they're supporting communism and anti-capitalist. I think Antifa clearly is a communist group. Their, their new flag, by the way, I'm sorry, two days ago, 
is the hammer and the sickle. I think it's a oh, terror. No I think, it's a, yeah. I think so, it's a terrorist group. Yeah. Well, you, we, they and, should be categorized as such. Right. But you now have them carrying black background with, right. with white hammer and sickle flag. So right. they're communists in my view. Uh, these kids that have that we have so wonderfully educated over the past few decades have turned out exactly the way uh, they hope that <laughs> they, they were would. programmed to do uh, it. They're, sure. they're the local socialists yeah. slash communists, and right. that's what they are. And they're into the, the, the disruption uh, of, uh, of capitalism in our country and what's in our constitutional republic. And, but, but they're, let's be honest, they're, but they're led by, or if you will, guided by, uh, a lot of the elite uh, NWO folks, George Soros being the big gorilla in the room, that's where the money's coming from for these people. These are willing idiots. They just are. And they're lemmings, and they don't understand they're being used as pawns in a much larger game. Like they're signing up for ISIS. I mean, I don't know where this young generation is getting all of their information that they need to be signing up or joining all of these uh, anti-American uh, groups. But they're doing it in in herds. I mean, in larger numbers than I've ever seen. And and the Nazi Party was huge back a hundred years ago or eighty years right, ago. Yeah. The, there was a there was a large movement of it in the early in the early nineteen hundreds. But see, to me, and the Communist Party. To also. me, it's it's the the way this is working itself out is Antifa being one group. You got the uh, you got the uh, BLM, Black Lives Matter, as another. In a lot of cases, they're allied. With, uh, Unlike the Bureau of Land Management. Well, no, it's another terrorist. <laughs> Which is <laughs> so, uh, we've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, when X Five, you notice I identified. Allegedly, allegedly, I'm not one of those. <laughs> you didn't have anything, right? <laughs> and then you've also got your white, your your, your actual white supremacists. You just they're still wearing the white robes and the hoods, uh, and and the remnants of the, of the actual Nazi Party. Uh, but all of these groups and the Ku Klux Klan. They're all being tossed together in a big pot yeah. uh, to, to actually go and cause this mayhem. Uh, people like uh, the people who were down in, in Boston the other day, the three, that's all they got with about 300 people, uh, free speech folks, were folks like us. And, you know, they're trying to categorize us as white nationalists. And we, even, even Fox News, when uh, uh, Charlottesville happened, they were calling uh, uh, the people that were there white nationalists. They were white supremacists. They, they weren't white nationalists, basically. It, it, and uh, so that's what you had. You had the stirring of that pot. And uh, I, see, I see this becoming, and you saw the other day what happened uh, yesterday with, with uh, Trump in, in Phoenix. Uh, the the bikers for Trump showed up in right. huge numbers and said, uh, uh you know, we, we just the people of this country have had enough. Right, I'm done with all of this. Right, yeah. I think I think President Trump is doing a great job. Yes. I got to tell you, I I mean, from day one, from before day one, but I think right now he's even stronger than he's ever been. I mean, the news you don't hear a positive word about him at all. Listen to CNN and you just go, I mean, it's and just go to a rally. Go to a you, rally. There's no room. I'm uh, watching what he's doing. He could care problems. less about his about what anyone's saying about him. He's got an, he's got an agenda and a plan. I got to tell you, if you look at the forces arrayed against him, it's amazing. I tried to look up because right after the the Charlottesville thing, I I postulated that it was the mayor's fault, and then I'd heard from somebody else. I think I was listening to Rush Limbaugh that there was actually articles starting to come out about how it was really the mayor's fault for what happened down there. Of course it was. And so I started, I tried to look that up on Google. It took me to the fourth page till I found anything. Everything else was about why it's Trump's fault. Yeah. Even though my search never said Trump in the, even in the, in the uh, search engine. It was the mayor and the, I think the mayor's name and fault and something else and and it was i think we can throw the governor into that that mix as well oh yeah yeah i mean they're part and parcel but. yeah they're they're two peas in a pod and uh uh and again you you can just follow some of these actions and you'll see it as the year wears on uh cities where you have strong republican uh governorship uh or, or mayorship uh, they'll react very differently with the police force than well. I don't those know. Boston they, did pretty good the well, other Boston day. Boston did do good, but you do have a Republican governor. Right. Yeah, I know. But Boston uh, handled it very well. They because they, they were uh, they were uh, set up for a riot. They were four deep cops. Yep. And, and they don't play. And these these little dirt bags were like throwing bottles of <laughs> urine, rocks yep. at them, and everything else. Right. And. Um, 
the cops would grab the the kid, pull him to the like the third tier, beat the crap out of him, and stuff him and cuff him. You know, yeah. and well, that's what needs to happen. That and, needs, and, yeah. And, yes, and exactly. Boston cops don't play. No, no, that's no. That's it. I think. I think Gosh. Boston cops all through history, it's basically the Irish Boston yeah, cops. Right, but they've they've never tolerated that kind no. of stuff, and I think and they've had plenty of practice with large groups of of unrest. They have. They, yeah. they, 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 so they, I agree with you, Gary. They did a really good job. It was a great job. Stark difference between what happened in Boston, right, with a lot more people, right, uh, than what happened in Virginia, right. Yeah. No, my ex, I had a uh, run in with the Boston police when I was a teenager. You'll love this, right? I come out of a concert. My buddy's drunk, and um, I'm not. Me and my friends are over, and my friend can't figure out which car's the one we came in. And he's going to, from car to car to car, and we're wa we're actually taking going into the bathroom over in back of a building or something. We <laughs> we're watching him acting like being dumb, you know. We thought it was pretty funny, and then we, you know, he co finds the car. We all come from the back of the building, go and get in the car. Well, I realized after the fact that, that for a cop, that looked like somebody was casing the cars, found one that was open, and we all jumped in. And uh, they did not mess around, man. That, that cruiser pulled in front of my car. He got out. He put the, the, his revolver on the hood of the car and pointed at my face and had used a couple of cuss words and told me to shut the car off. You know what I, I did? You did. You know what I did, Jack? I shut the car off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a That's smart move. It. That was a smart move. That's why you're still here. Yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah, they don't mess around. They're, they're, yeah. they're, but the thing is, the Charlottesville cops should have been just as prepared. Here's yeah, but you unless know what? unless they were deliberately, you know. Oh, I think I think it was deliberate to tell them to to, to stand down and, and not do anything. But I, here's where I'm at on that. Unless and until we start to see, I, will, I want to use the Charlotte Police Department. Uh, right now as, as, as part of the point of my discussion because I really feel that most policemen, I think you'll agree with me, good, honest, hardworking guys that go to work, yeah. and women that go to work every day uh, and, and do a great job, I think they're no different. I think, though, that, you know, they're taking orders. And therein lies a big problem. Uh, you get those guys out there. You can't tell me that, they, and they had to stand down there watching what was going on, that they had turmoil within themselves, that they... That here they are standing there, and, and, and everything that was happening in front of them was contrary to, to what they sh you know should be doing. They should have been out there. They should have been stopping the mayhem. They should have been, if anything, keeping the groups apart. Should have been doing all those things. And I know they know that. And there comes a point in time where a paycheck has has to stop being the reason why you do everything. Uh, there has to come a point in time where the leadership of the police department, the chiefs and the commanders, basically say. When they're told there's a, the person died, okay, with multiple people injured, in my view, partly as a direct result of the inaction of the police department there, and keeping the peace, protecting and serving, mm -hmm. and the, the, unless and until you start to get some pushback uh, against people, the mayors and, and the governors that that order these policemen, these good men to, and women, to stand down and not do their jobs. Uh, because as far as I'm concerned, sooner or later that's going to have to start to happen. They're going to have to start breaking ranks, and they're going to have to give orders to these men and women under their command to go out and do their jobs and stop the mayhem and to stop doing it at the risk of losing their jobs. But this is part of what's wrong. Um, I, I don't believe in my heart that most of those police officers really wanted to stand down. Right. Yeah, I think I, I, don't, I probably I, not. Yeah. It, I think I think the contrast between the Boston police and the uh, Charlottesville police is leadership, you know, and the leadership told him not, you know, I, you know, I couldn't get any confirmation they were told to stand down, but I am positive that if there was such a command, you would never hear about it or be able to find it anywhere anyway. Now the police admitted they were told to stand down. Right. Oh, They're okay. not happy. Right. Okay. No, okay. No, they would. They they admitted it. Yeah, because like even though it was a person that drove the car into those people, it was the absence. You know, when you create a power vacuum, then there's there's turmoil and, and chaos, and that's what that's what happens. It was not not that particular instance may not have been predictable, but a lot of violence certainly was predictable, and there was. Yeah. Well, you saw that. I don't know if you saw the video of. That car, that, 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 and the guy in that car was driving up very slowly, 
approaching to stop behind the other cars ahead of him, and uh, an Antifa thug whacked the back of that guy's, that's a nice car, uh, smashed the back of his car with a ball bat or a, or a big two by four, uh, and it was at that point that guy just stepped on the gas. He, I, I, am, I am convinced that this guy is now being used as a pawn, regardless of what they came up with on this guy. He was mad, he got, he, he got a bit afraid, uh, he stepped on the gas because they smashed his car. That's what ha happened, it's the truth of it. And then all the rest of the narrative was developed by our wonderful mainstream media. It was a great tool. Are you sure? Positive. I, 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 yeah, I haven't seen the video, yep. so oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, the video. Because the can thing see is, it. if you, if you believe your life's in danger, like let's say you're, you're going along and they decide to stop traffic and start, you know, breaking your window. What if you got a kid in the car? I'm you're stepping on the gas, Gary. Bingo. That's the only way I'm getting out of there. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's exactly what I happened. I use a necessity defense. It. I mean, you've got a you've got you've got a, a, rule a right of to defend a, yourself. You've got a rule of necessity. Yeah. I mean, or you've got a. You've got to make a necessary decision at that moment to save your life. I don't think anyone can argue with that. I, and, I, and I don't think anyone would. Right. So I am telling you that that happened. And, okay. and it changes the narrative completely. Yes, it does. Uh, and we'll see as, the, as the, uh, this whole thing uh, rolls on and this, this young man goes to, probably goes to trial. But uh, you watch. If, if it's a fair and objective jury, and he'll be found not guilty because he's feared for his life. Yeah, because this stuff is going on all around the country. There was the, uh, let's see, Seattle. Again, the Antifa group was throwing urine. There were actually women defecating in, in on stuff and then throwing that at the police. Yeah, what is, I mean, this, well, I don't is, know this is, is just unheard of. It's, it's, it's so, this it's, whole it's, thing is going over a cliff. I mean, it's uh, kind of kind of obvious. What about uh, Sheriff Apayo? Apayo? Where, what, what's happening? Well, uh, I think, of course, we. I know. I've, I've met him a few times. So yeah. I, I completely admire the man. He's a great guy. And uh, he, he and I had a great talk when I was out there several years ago. And he's, I said, what, what made you, you know, run for sheriff in the first place? He said, yeah, I come out here to retire. I was 60-something years old. I came here to retire. And I didn't like what I saw, so I ran. I said, how old are you now? He said, I'm 86. That was, <laughs> what? And he, he's, he's, I mean, now he's got to be 90. He doesn't look like that. Wow. But, but the guy, but he's, he's a hero to most of us. And uh, uh, I think he'll, he'll probably pardon, but he's got a misdemeanor. They've been out to get him for a long time. Right. Of course they have. And they charged him with uh, contempt of court or something like that because he actually was obeying the law. Uh, and, uh, you know, so they, they found him guilty of the misdemeanor. And, you know, Trump's going to, that's an easy one. I, I thought he was going to do it last night. No, he didn't, but I think he will. He was asked not. I don't. Yeah. I, he didn't. I, they didn't want to marry. They this. didn't want to do the thing to last night. I, I think. Yeah. I think. I think if there was, Yeah, but if they, I think probably because if there was uh, an outbreak of violence, which was pretty predictable, he would have been blamed again. President and, Trump needs to pardon a few other people that. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Probably doesn't, probably doesn't agreed. belong. Totally. Totally agree. Right. Same. Same jury, judge. Same. Same scenario. Of the people that want to put these people away, did it to sheriff and um, and they've done it to other people too. I think uh, yeah, the president yeah. needs to step and in. And as you may have already heard, that the four defendants uh, in the Bundy Ranch process and trial, this is the, the group that's being tried a second time. Right. Uh, all four of the, f the two were found not guilty of all charges, and the other two were found not guilty of all but six charges. And of the six charges, all six were hung jury. So there was not, not one of the 40 charges, not one guilty verdict. And that's after Judge Gloria Navarro did everything humanly possible to right. find innocent men guilty right. and restrict the defense attorneys from doing their jobs and allowing them to defend these men. Well, the jury figured it out, wait, and that wait, was wait. a hand-picked jury. Some, some people tune in and have no idea well. what you're talking about. Hi, guys. Okay. Uh, this goes back to the uh, Bunkerville situation in 2014. We're talking really about Jerry DeLamis here. And uh, by the way, for those of you who do know what I'm talking about, Jerry has now been moved uh, to Fort Devens in Massachusetts. And it's a minimum security facility. Uh, he can have visitors. And uh, I asked Sue to send me um, his mailing address, and hopefully she'll get my text. Um, but she didn't yet. Uh, but uh, Jerry went out there in 2014, along with thousands of others, uh, to stop what 
all of us who were paying attention considered to be a, a, a major infraction of a person's liberty and freedom and uh, an attempt by the Bureau of Land Management uh, to uh, take a man's land and his cattle, his livelihood, and so forth. Not to get into the whole story, but uh, Jerry went along with many, many others um, uh, to stand with this man, not to cause a problem or cause trouble, but to make sure that the Bureau of Land Management uh, did not attack this man and his family. Um, and as, as would have it, Jerry came back home, everything went fine, nobody was hurt, nothing happened. And, uh, but uh, what happened was the feds had to back down, mostly because the local sheriffs told them they had to get out of there and let the Bundy uh, supporters go and take the cattle back that, that, that these men had wrestled. And uh, they were all tacked out, ready to shoot these innocent people. But, right. Uh, that didn't happen. Jerry wasn't there. Most of the charges that they levied against Jerry was for that event. He wasn't even there. And uh, Jerry, uh, a plea, he, what he did was he got a, a plea deal going where he, he decided it was better for him to, uh, and it was a coerced plea deal because the FBI was threatening his family and friends uh, that they would pick, be, they'd pick them up as well. You know, if uh, there wasn't evidence turned in on Jerry and so on and so forth, Jerry just, in his own viewpoint, put a stop to it by issuing a plea deal and file and, and, and a couple of charges he pled guilty to. In Oregon, they had a, a trial of seven men at, at the mayor refuge. They were all found innocent of all charges. And Jerry then said, you know, I, I really think I should take my chances with the jury of my peers. And he opted to try to withdraw his plea. Judge Gloria Navarro most tyrannical judge I've ever seen or heard of, uh, ultimately refused to let him with, have the hearing to withdraw the plea oh. and sentence him instead. He's now sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. He's done nothing wrong. And, and, and so we now can focus, as he's closer, uh, on trying now to get either Jerry a pardon or get an appeal going so that we can... Uh, if he appeals, though, won't he have to go back to Nevada? I don't think so. I think we can try to get an appeal run through a, a federal judge in our area here. I don't think he should have to go back. But you know what? I'm not an attorney, and I don't know. Yeah. So, But that's that's just an update. So the good news is Sue's been able to see him, hug him, kiss him after all this, all this time, and they held hands for two straight hours and talked, and... Um, you know, it was funny because I saw I saw Sue last Monday and so I give her another hug and I said, you know, you, you're getting too skinny, and she says, oh my God, I can't I can't believe you said that to me. I said, well, I said, that's what Jerry said to me when he hugged me. I said, well, <laughs> it's just so, I guess, you know, but um, stress no, has got to be God love her. Yeah, the stress is oh, incredible. Oh, she's such what a wonderful she's going friend. Through. And so she's she's love tough. Sue. She's uh, as Jerry said, she's the perfect yeah. Marine wife. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thick and thin, yeah. better or yeah. worse. This is the worst. But yeah, we got a lot of bad stuff going on in the country right now, and I don't think it's going to get any better. It's going to get a lot worse before it does get better. Right. Yeah, I can't. I can't. It's it's hard for me to believe. It's it's profound how the um, media is just so stacked up against them. The insiders in D.C., Republican and Democrats, are stacked up. It's like all media, all I think the whole inside, the whole cir inner circle, the whole, not the whole, but I mean it's half of the half of the inner circle, and the entire media except possibly Fox. And that's only possibly. partially Fox. Yeah, they're Fox they're turning. Too. They took a big left turn. Fox is definitely going the other way now. Yes, they are. And uh, Do you yeah. hear the actually the good news. Is uh, Bannon is there was a start his own network? Start his own network. If he does, he'll clean house. No, he'll grab everybody. He'll grab everybody because the people like us that don't even bother watching the news anymore. I don't watch Fox anymore. Why either. would you bother? Sometimes the only I, show that I might watch is Sean's. Tucker is pretty good. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carl, yeah, he's good. He's good. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else. Right. Uh, let me tell you where I where I'm at on this. I think I think this is important. I think we we let's agree on this. We we. This country had a revolution, a non-shooting revolution, which was Trump's election. This, this, this man got elected, the pure outsider. There was, there was everybody else, I mean, 16 candidates. They chose the, the absolute 100% outsider here. And, and, you know, very, very, he won overwhelmingly. In fact, now we know with so many fraudulent votes. We also now know that the election was fixed for Hillary. 
I mean, the shock and disbelief the night of the election, and I stayed up the whole entire time with the press flipping to all these channels, yeah. was quite obvious. They they absolutely knew that Hillary was going to win this yes, election. They did. And, and including Fox, okay, I might add. And whenever Trump wound up winning this election, I, I said to myself, he overwhelmed the fix. He actually got so many damn votes, he overwhelmed a fixed election. I, to my core, I believe that's what happened, and oh, that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. that's oh, why yeah. everybody was in shock. So now, all of a sudden, you've got I all wasn't. of the. I wasn't. Yeah, well, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't shocked that he won. Right. But 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 now what we have is the the new world order, the elites, all the people, yeah. including a lot of Republicans, uh, because as far as I'm concerned, you know, you've got a meshing of of establishments here. You you, you definitely it's. One thing that we Ugh. learned after this election was how corrupt our government really was. Right. We have learned how deep this goes right. and how, what a huge job this man has in trying to literally drain the swamp. This right. is a this is an ocean, not a swamp. Right. Uh, and everyone in it is pretty dirty. And so one of the problems that he's running into is that everyone's turned against him because he's disrupted everything that they had planned. And what, what he's trying to do is to get rid of and put in place good people and so forth. It's not easy. Some of the people he's put in these positions, he's had to get rid of and he's had to put additional people in. But he's got a long, long way to go. I mean, he, the tentacles are so deep. I, I, and I don't know how he's going to get enough people to come in and replace all of the people that have been so supportive of, of, of uh, the deep state. Uh, because this is not just Obama's administration. It goes even deeper than that. A lot right. deeper. It's, so, so what I see happening now is you're seeing it now visually play out on the streets. Okay, this is their fight back. They're going to take. They're going to go ahead and cause this disruption. They're going to cause the mayhem. They're going to do everything they can. They're going to try to bring this man down, and they're going to try to bring him down either by forcing him out or to come up with some foolish impeachment reason that they're going to try to use, or worse. Yeah. Because if they feel the ship is going to tip and sink or capsize. They're not going to allow it to happen. And, guys, that's my fear. Yeah. My fear is that he's, he's up for the fight. There's no question. He, he's right. proven that to me. He's up for the fight. But being up for the fight and being, willing, uh, 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 being able to win it are two different things. Right. Um, and he, he needs a, he's smart, and he's trying to get the military on his side. He, the military loves the guy. Uh, the police, most of them love him, too. Uh, he understands what the men in blue do and what our military does more than most presidents have. But I do believe that um, uh, he's got a lot of enemies in, in, uh, right in that White House. He's got a lot of enemies. Because yeah. you, you functionally, I think what he did, when, one of the good things, he, a couple things. I used to listen to Jay Severn. He used to be out of Boston. Yeah, I know. Really yeah. good guy. Kind of said some stupid stuff, got kicked off. Um, but he used to tell, because he, he was, in, he was a, uh, a consultant for campaigns. And he used to tell Republican people running for the Republican nomination, he says, "Look, you got to come up with a come out, achieve a five to ten percent over the votes needed to overcome the corruption." That's, that's true. And and that is a you're right. That's exactly what you saw, and that's <coughs> that's why they were so upset because and the reason Hillary didn't campaign that much. She didn't have to. It was, she was she supposed to win. To. It was fixed. Absolutely. Why, why would you? Why it was would, a gimme. Oh, Why yeah. would you this, work your butt off on a fixed? And room nobody was game. going to see her. The places she went. Right. They, they were, were empty. A couple hundred people. Right. It, it, it was. It was stark. This she, was. She started to panic. This was a plan of the left, going back, literally going back to the to, to the to the to the nineteen hundreds to the teens, nineteen fifteen or nineteen eighteen or so. And this is a long time plan in the making. Obama was the last one. The next one was, you know, was the hatchet lady that was going to get rid of everything that we knew, everything that we knew and fight for uh, for this country. Right. And, and Trump has taken it, action against the United Nations. It disappeared. Mm -hmm. in it, it dissolved right in front of their eyes. And that's what's causing all of, I think that's what's causing all of it this is. panic and mayhem because they absolutely lost, they're losing it. Because they saw it, it was in their hands. They had it right there, and just like dropping a football in the end zone, away. right? With Hillary's election, it was right it was there. Complete. 
and they knew it. Yep. And and all of a sudden, oh my God, it was the it was the New England Patriots pulling it off in the yep. fourth quarter. That's you know? right. And it sucked uh, the and air right out of every one of them. And that's what's happened here. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, this is and it's war. Now, do you do you think it is war? And hopefully, it stays bloodless. I mean, hopefully, it stays. You know, uh, hopefully, we don't have a major. Uh, do you, do you think that the the forces that are against Trump? Because I've I've looked at it a couple different ways. Like one is we have a problem in the education system because Big if one. you look at a a professor, a pre professor lives in a socialist environment. College is a socialist environment. They depend on uh, taxpayer money to provide for them, if not directly, indirectly through student loans, to exist. So they are... Through the university system especially. Yeah, so they're, they're, the university system is a socialist system. But isn't the so entire so public what, school system the same? Same thing. It's just a... So they produce socialists, because that's, that's what they are. So you have that system. You have what I believe, and this is, I think, part of it, is you have a, a ruling um, class in the United States of America, okay? And that ruling class allows you to play with them if you play by their rules. No matter the party. No matter the party. I'm not saying oh, party. Oh, yeah. No, no. They're... I know somebody personally who was asked to run for Congress, and they were asked, this, well, how does it work? He says, what you do is every time you sponsor a bill, you sponsor 20 bills, right? for this company or that company or this lobbyist or that lobbyist, every time you sponsor a bill for one of these lobbyists, they put $5,000 into the, the uh, congressional uh, campaign fund for you. And that funds your campaign. And if you don't do it enough, they'll find somebody to run against you. Okay, so that's, that's what happens. I'm sure it happens in the Democrat Party. That, and so they've got this system and they've got people who play ball, and they go up there and they pretend they're doing the people's business, but they're actually doing exactly whatever lobbyist tells them to do. And that system is derived. So he's fighting that system, which is profoundly and absolutely corrupt. And then you've got the other system, which most people and a lot of people in D.C. were trying to go to, which is a globalist economy and globalist governing system. And he, he put that in the, uh, uh, in the drink. Mm -hmm. So I think he's got like all these different huge groups, some of which, you know, uh, and, and the media that are all arrayed against him. It's, well, it's for, so formidable. The other thing he's doing, and, most, and it's not being reported at all in the mainstream media, is we have a massive, massive pedophile ring. Uh, operating out of D.C. and, of course, in the country and worldwide, and a lot of the elites you'd be stunned to find are members. Uh, he's been rounding them up by the thousands, and uh, it's being kept quiet, but he's, ca he's bringing them all in, he's arresting them all, and it's been, you, know, you probably heard some of the, uh, the Hollywood folks coming out, letting everyone know that that's, it's, it's all, that, that the Hollywood is controlled that way as well, and uh, some of these child stars and what they went through. And so that's another big issue that nobody talks about. In fact, you're probably surprised I'm talking about it. But basically it's there when people laugh at me when I tell them that the pizza gate is real. Uh, just do your homework and you'll find out. They chuckle and they just, just discard the, the information. It's, it's all for real. We, we, we are now confronted. So, um, so let, let's just, so I don't, I've, I've looked into pizza gate. I don't, it's really hard to find out what truth is anymore. Let's presume it's real. Just for this, I'll, I'll agree with you for this argument. So you get a con Congressman A involved in pedophilia. Maybe it's just underage, you know, 15-year-old girls, mm -hmm. not 10-year-old girls or whatever. And if, if you can get them involved in that, if you can lure them in, you own them. That's exactly right. And that's part of the, that's the issue. So what happens now is what they're going to try to do is to bring this bring this to the forefront, and these people are going to be revealed. They're going to be arrested, revealed, and they're going to have to. These people will lose their positions. They'll have to. They're going to have to.
be removed right. from office. But again, these things are so vile. These things are so serious. It's so deeply it's so entrenched deeply and in, rooted exactly. in the entire makeup system. of the system. And so, and so you've now got a guy <laughs> who's willing to wage war right. on behalf. Look, Donald Trump doesn't have to be doing this. Donald Trump could have lived his life right. in luxury for the remainder of his years. There's only one reason he is doing this. He right. truly does love this country, right. and he's decided that he's going to dedicate these these years, these final years, trying to fight for it. Right. And I think he's probably completely stunned. For all of us, and for his children and exactly. his grandchildren. Exactly, but I'm sure he's sitting in there going, yeah. oh my God, you know, because I don't think he had a clue how bad, how deep how bad it, really, it was. Yeah. He it's, knew It's the bit, fabric. But he didn't know how deep this was. Yeah. And so now he does. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, seriously, I, he's got a pretty large family uh, and so forth. And he has to be concerned. He has to be worried about what could happen to any and all of them. And uh, so I give him, I give him a round of applause big time for his courage and his tenacity. Oh, because I don't bet. think anybody else... Thousand they times over. This. They, they, they would Thousand times over, this. Jack. No, I mean, they, would, they would have already buckled by now. Yeah, by easily. I was one easily. of the few. I mean, but I was. I saw the whole thing just form out of this, out of thin air, and you go, "He's the one." I mean, this was this was not even everything that he's doing today. He was saying he was going to do it right from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. He never. Yeah, I mean, I asked him some really upfront questions the first time I met him. Oh, probably not the first time I met him, but the, the, the second time actually we had a meeting and three or four months before the, uh, before the uh, signing up to run. He absolutely answered questions and he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. See, I think what's happening is, I don't know. But he had a message and he wasn't taking contributions like what you said about the, the congressman. They've got to sponsor bills. They've, they're, they're indebted to these lobbyists. They're indebted to these companies. They're indebted. Trump had a message. He got people behind him, and he didn't take any contributions from anybody. He paid for it. He wouldn't take anybody's money. Yeah. He didn't want lobbyist money. And that's the problem with the people that we elect today is that they think they need money, and they don't need a message. And they're absolutely, it's just wrong, but they're trying to buy their way in rather than win their way in like Trump did. Yeah, and I think that, that Trump now, uh, and he's going he's going to go all the way or he's not going to get I'm there. He knows he's just going to continue. So tired of politicians taking money. They, oh, really, well. they really need to have a message and start working to win rather than just expecting to buy their way in by selling their well, votes. Well, that's why you know, we push for term limits, but let's be honest <laughs> with each other here. We are supposed to be the term limiters. Right. You know, we the people are supposed to recognize this garbage and get rid of these people. Right. We don't. That's why John McCain's still there. You know. But if elections are so it, fixed, Jack, what's the possibility of people vote this guy out? But he really, but he wins. I mean, what's that? Well, that what's the potential that of that? Probably if, goes on. If you know, we know that's how, many... how corrupt I believe it is. I, I've become very cynical. I mean, I you know, I started I started my endeavor into to politics just only because I was right. so upset at what I was seeing and observing. Uh, now I'm going, oh my God, I I was naive as hell. I mean, I, you know, I, after this election, <laughs> I'm going, good God. I mean, this, this government of ours is corrupt to its core. Uh, there's very few people, you know, the Louis Gomers, the Trey Gowdy's, the, yeah. you know, those right. guys, the Ted Cruz's of the world are few and far between. Right. They're not able to elicit very much change, and I'm sure it's extraordinarily frustrating for them right. to be fighting as hard as they are and knowing full well they're probably not going to get too far uh, only because of the forces arrayed against them and, uh, and what they've, they've been confronted with. So, uh, you know, we the people, it's, it's really coming down to us. I, I have to say, I think at the end of the day, we are the ones that are going to be left to clean this mess up. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, you know what that means. And, but I, I, I don't see any other way. I think every single member of Congress should be removed. That's my personal opinion. Right. And we should start over again. Uh, how do we get there? That's a toughie. I mean, there are some people I would say we can call out and keep, but but uh, for the most part, I have no respect for most of them any longer. Well, th one of the things, as far as the uh, corruption, one of the things that struck 
cut uh, salary and benefits, and you'll see a lot of them just leave. Sure. Yeah. Well, New Hampshire kind of does it right, you know. <laughs> now, you really got to want to <laughs> participate in your government in New Hampshire. Right, in the state. Get paid exactly, anything. right? Or yeah, do or, the same thing on the federal level. and, and Massachusetts, they you get watch paid people. well. I mean, they, you know, they're, con uh, they're state uh, reps but and senators. If, right. you, if you looked, I think it was uh, Ohio, um, Detroit. So they started doing, the, uh, Jill Stein forced them to do a recount. Right? Yeah. And I don't know, I didn't understand, well, I know why, but the the media is so corrupt. This should have been front page news all around the country for weeks. In Detroit, the system is, and I'll, this is, I'll simplify it, you have a thousand voters in this precinct, right? Mm -hmm. And they're, they, they recount, they do a recount. And they found out that there was a thousand and ten votes. Okay, but there's only a thousand voters in the, but there's a thousand and ten or a thousand and one hundred, all likely for Hillary Clinton. You know what their default position is? The default position is that whatever the original if if there is a conflict between the recount and the original vote, the original vote stands. Then why have a recount? Exactly. It was, it was huge. It was huge news. It was so profoundly corrupt and so obvious. Mm. I thought that was like, wow, how can, how can you claim there's no corruption and no voter fraud when that is so blatant? Oh, my God. And, and nobody even... How many times have we wondered, how did they lose? Uh, it's, and you just go... Even, even uh, Obama's last election... Uh, how did he win? How did he win? I, and how did he win I, I the was, second I was election? I so stunned. That right. Night. I went, there's no way. Well, then most incumbents no win. Most incumbent presidents no, no, but win. Not him. I know. Out, you know, so there's no way. I know. After first well, four years, Romney was not that great. No, but even so, you know, a, a rock I would have thought would have beaten Obama the second time out. You know, but yeah, I was so I was shocked. I just it didn't make sense to me. And then I thought to myself, this is. This is they fixed. Romney had a heck of a rally at the Verizon Center oh, was there. right before was there. the election. Yeah, I was there. Right? I walked out of there saying he won. I walked out of there going, he's, yeah, he's done. He's won. He's this won. is it. Then nobody could put on a show like, nobody could put on a, a, a you know, campaign, last night campaign rush before. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I was so. absolutely, yeah. yeah. It was By the way, I don't know what's happened to Mitt lately. What he's coming out and the comments he's making, I'm just like, whoa, what are you doing? You well, know. I think I think I think, and I, I like you know, him. I liked him yeah. so much. You know what the beauty of all this is, though, you've got the Mitt Romneys, and people like that, and now you know exactly where they stand. Yeah, because yeah. they're all turning on Trump. They are, right? Bush, right? It, it's 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 so true, and almost like they're nervous about well because they're being exposed. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we got to figure I, I this think stuff that's out. A big part is I there? It's, there's so much crap on By that. By the way, we promised not to be politically correct tonight, so anybody watching yeah, that's sorry. offended, I'm sorry, but not I'm really. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're yeah. just, yeah, it's time, it's time to talk. It's time to. Uh, uh, we got to be real. We've got to be know, real. We, Stop we, being politically We don't correct. have a lot of time left, and, uh, and we got to make our minds up if we're going to be courageous or cowards. And right now, and it's like a good example is that, you know, Sue Delanus was talking to somebody, and I won't mention names, but. We're talking about when we get if we can get Jerry home, however we can get him home, we'll have a big party and this kind of thing. And this guy says, "Oh no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go to that party because you never know how many FBI informants are there taking pictures." And oh, I'm sure there would be. Right. Yeah, but I'd All go right, anyway. Well, that's the, but that's the point. You go anyway. You go so anyway. So my my whole, my, but my issue is, and that I'm only using that as an example, uh, to say a lot of people feel that way, and so you don't wind up with uh, people coming out and. Being courageous, uh, people are refusing to be, if you will, be courageous because they they are fearful, and and that's what we we talk about Thomas Jefferson and and his comment in his one of his quotes, which was, uh, when the people fear fear their government, you have tyranny, uh, but when the when the government fears its people, you have liberty, and and boy, it's that true today, you know, a lot of the people fear their government, and you even have people uh, Act for America canceling all of their. Right. rallies uh, because the, of their fear uh, that Antifa is going to show up and others to disrupt and cause mayhem. But again, my attitude about that is you have them anyway. You, you can't, again, you can't cow. 
if you do, you've already lost. If you're not willing, if, if you've got a scheduled rally and so on and so forth, if you cancel it simply because there's a possible threat that some people might come and cause disruption, I mean, you, you've already lost. Right. There's no winning. I right. mean, if you're not, you've if got you're to not have brave it. enough to do that, if you're not brave enough to stand under those circumstances, God help the country. And, and, and it's not, and, and Gary, you brought up a good point. These, these groups, other than the Antifa set, set up, are not that large. These, the, the people in the white supremacist movement or the, or the Nazi movement, they're, they're, they're negligible. They're, they're, they don't represent what's going on. No. They're tiny groups. Even Antifa, they're moving them. All they're doing is moving them around, make it look like there's a lot of them. But they're not. They're getting paid. They're getting paid to be there. They're busting them in. You know, the people from Charlottesville all came. 95% uh, came from outside the state. Wow. 95%. 95%. They bust them all in. So that's what's going on, and that's the reality of the situation. And, uh, you know, we as Americans have, have better okay. realize that mainstream media is if, the ones that are f formulating the narrative. If somebody is paying to bust people in who's even on their own, on their own Facebook pages and everything else advocate violence... Yep. How is that not f fall under the RICO Act? Why isn't somebody being should, arrested? They should be arrested and charged. And I all mean, the people I mean, are being paid twenty-five dollars an hour to cause mayhem. If you bust, you know, five hundred Second Amendment people down to Washington to for a Second Amendment rally, that's there's no violence. No, there isn't any violence. It's all peaceful. It's not why now, we're there. If you bust five hundred pro Second Amendment people down there with you know with slingshots and and bottles and bricks and stuff like that to go down there and to inflict injury on whoever's opposing you that's a crime well i agree with you and nothing's happening to these people i look at a guy like jerry delima sitting in jail having done nothing but defend another man's liberty that's all he did and you see you watch antifa destroying property black lives matter destroying property beating people to a pulp because they happen to have a trump hat on uh, or for that matter, even veterans now are catching it, uh, and nothing yeah, happens they to them. they dragged a little old lady who had a flag. With the American flag. Dragged her. Yep. Yeah. And, White you know, she's hanging on to that flag, man, that little old lady. She's hanging, I'm going, and nobody, I mean, people should have been, if I were there, if others were yeah. there. Oh, yeah. There's no way that guy, I mean, I'm serious. I'm, right. I've had it. And, and, and I say, you know, that's where we've got to start making a stand. We can, and the people that are perpetrating this stuff, they go scot-free. For the most part, no punishments inflicted, no arrests are made. There may be a few. But for the most part, nothing happens to these guys or gals. And, and th therein lies a big part of the problem because they know they're protected. Right. You have to go to jail. Soros is going to put up the money to get them right. out. Well, the thing and is, these 20 and 30,000, these same faces show up at all these different rallies around the country. Where you know, there's a lot of money paying these people to to be very mobile, and yeah, if you're multi-billionaire, it's not a lot of money. So, yeah, you know, no, but this is well, right. right? But there's a lot of money that's funding all of these all of these uh, large groups to show up at whatever wherever they are. Well, I think that I think they're funding a core group to go everywhere, and then you have people that are join them, join them because yeah. they they don't they're they don't really understand what they're really all about. Yeah, you know, I got a friend of mine on Facebook who's all, you know, supportive of Antifa, and it's because she doesn't really get it. She doesn't understand that free speech is free speech, and just because you disagree with somebody doesn't mean you can throw stuff at them. No, and that's the thing that, that we have lost with, with our education system. These kids don't know the basic fundamentals of where we have come from and our Constitution and no. what it means no. and how we fought to... to uh, uh, to develop that foundation upon which this entire country was built. They, they have no relationship at yeah. all uh, with, with our country and its history. That's why they're so easily swayed. World War One, World War II, yeah. the Korean War, they yeah. probably never heard Burning of that Burning the one. American flag. Right. You know, you want to you wanna see somebody get incensed, that's me, uh, you know, because I know what it stands for, and my dad fought. Uh, that's a symbol of freedom all over the world. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and people have, so many people have fought, blood, and died for that symbol. Right. Uh, to just do that. Uh, so, you know, I think it's time we at least start to realize we've got to step up. We right. can't be sitting at home. We, you know, we had the rally for Jerry on April 29th. Gary was there. I know a few were there, John. I, but uh, I was disappointed. We got only 130 people came to that rally. And that quad should have been full if you, if, because it was for both Jerry and for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But 130 people showed up. And I know why 130 people showed up. 
mm -hmm. fear. They didn't want to be there to be associated with Jerry and what, what, what happened because they figured that they would be on a list or they'd have their photos taken or whatever by some informant. And if you're an informant and you're listening, go ahead. Really? <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, is, is, is you're, you're, you're absolutely right. If you go, I, I went uh, many years ago when, uh, I forget what it was, 10 years ago or something, there was a, a rally. It was supposed to be a clandestine meeting of people who were really upset because we were really on the verge of starting to really lose our Second Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's people in this room of 30 people talking about, you know, armed conflict. And I said, whoa, 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 dudes, you realize if there's 30 of us here, three of them are informants. You understand that. And probably the one who's, who's asking for uh, armed conflict. More than likely. Probably the one. Yeah. Because that's what the FBI does. Yeah, it is. Is they instigate a fight and then arrest people that fight. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's entrapment, but they get away with it. Um, so I don't understand why they don't have informants in this Antifa group. Oh. Or, or do they just not they care? They don't need to. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They really don't. And um, But, but I, I have to, I mean, hopefully hope that uh, as time progresses here, and you know, maybe we'll find them to be a, a domestic terrorist organization, them and Black Lives Matter, categorize them as what they are, and start uh, picking them up. But I don't think so. You know, is Obama, is Obama any involved in any yeah, of this? Yeah, I think he is, and I think Hillary is rallying too. all this yeah, and throwing money just, behind this. And just and yeah, I still think they're firmly entrenched in this. And Hillary, so. yeah. Oh yeah, they 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 want it. I mean, they they want it, and they're not gonna. By the way, if I may, this. Sue just texted me. And if you, anyone out there wants Jerry Delamus's mailing address, so you can send him a letter, it's Gerald Delamus, the number 15263-049, FMC, all caps, FMC, Devons, Federal Medical Center, and it's P.O. Box 879. P.O. Box 879, AYER, A -Y -E -R, Mass, ZIP, 01432. Write um, Jerry a letter. Write him a letter. He'll be yeah. glad to hear from you. Yeah. And go on to Sue's Facebook page. It's there if you missed it, uh, and, and get it from her. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's do what we can to let Jerry know that uh, he's in our thoughts and prayers always. Yeah, he's, he's, he's such a good guy. Yeah. You know, so it's one of those people that, you know, uh, you meet in life that, you know, would give you the shirt off his back if he, uh, you know, if he, if he had to, to help you out and stuff. Yeah, and that's how he broke his hip. I mean, he was he was on a roof and helping somebody else with an ice flow. Right. And, and the ice above came down and hit him and knocked him off the roof, and he got severely injured. Right. And that's what he was doing. He was just helping his neighbor. Right. You know, yeah. that's, that's what he's about. You know, he's sitting in prison. Yeah. Yeah. These yeah. Antifa thugs. Oh, by the way, I may make a recommendation yes. to everyone. You go and you go to a rally. I hope you will. If it's a, a rally for the good guys, uh, freedom of speech rally shouldn't be a problem, and veterans and whatever. But Antifa shows up and they start causing problems and don't back down. Pull their mask off. Because I firmly believe if you pull their mask off and the parents see who they are, that they really are, they won't let them back in the house in the basement apartment anymore. That's just me, but I think it's nice if you can just yank their mask off so that you can reveal who they are. Anybody, by the way, that, join, that, that comes to a rally to cause mayhem and hides behind a mask is a coward. Mm. Plain and simple, you're all cowards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if also, if you, go to, if you go to a rally and you're bringing bottles of urine, you might have a psychological issue. I mean, there is something seriously wrong. <laughs> You're bringing wrong it to here. the wrong place. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the wrong place for, for bringing your I thought they were all about... I don't think we're going to have... We're not going to have one of these rallies in New Hampshire. I don't believe... I don't think it would go over... might not go over well. Yeah, I and, well, I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not beyond, you know, down the road having something, uh, you know, some support rally for Donald Trump or something along those lines. But the thing is, you'll get blowback. People will just tell you, no, you can't do that. You know, you want to do that. You're going to cause a problem. So that's, that's my point. <laughs> Why should we not do it simply because people are saying to us, oh, we, we, if, we, if we do that, you're going to invite Antifa and these other groups. We're not inviting them. 
Free speech is it's only free speech. Free, you, 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 right. you, you were not inviting them. Free if, speech is only free speech if you're willing to express it. Exactly right. If you are afraid to express it, it is no longer free. We have to wrap it up. Jack, thanks for very much for coming on. John, thank you. And I want to say hello to uh, one of our newest uh, uh, viewers. Who's that? Emmy. Emmy. And I want to say hello to Emmy. And uh, she from Malaysia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's no, she's uh, from Indonesia, but oh. she's an American citizen. Been here a long time. Mm -hmm. So thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Hey, Jack, um, it's sweet. always great seeing you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.